I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my channel and the new website, Global Math Institute. We are looking into questions from a worksheet contributed by Lisa, a student in Ontario, Canada. Here is question number nine, which relates to dot product of vectors application. We will have, we will discuss two questions, question number nine and ten in this particular video. So let's begin with question number nine, which is find a vector that is orthogonal to both u, 2, 3, 1, and v, 4, 5, minus 2. Now, orthogonal means perpendicular, right? Now, in unit one, we don't really teach you cross product. So, so alternate solution will be using cross product. Since we have only done dot product, we need to apply dot product to get our solution, right? So we'll treat this as dot product application. Later in unit two, when we learn cross product, we can actually again answer this question using cross product. So we are given two vectors. One of them is u, which is 2, 3, 1. The other one is v, which is 4, 5, minus 2. Let us say w is orthogonal to both, and let's say we call it a, b, c. Now, if w is orthogonal, right, so... Then we have vector u dot w should be equal to 0. So that means 2, 3, 1 dot abc should be 0. And that gives you 2a plus 3b plus c equals to 0. So we get one equation. So let's call this as our equation number 1. Now, it also means that v dot w is also equals to 0, and that means that 4, 5 minus 2 dot abc is equal to 0, and that gives you equation number 2, which is 4a plus 5b minus 2c equals to 0. So, we get two conditions. Now, from these two conditions, we need to find the value of a, b, and c. So, we, have, we are solving these two equations. One is 4a plus 5b minus 2c equals to 0. And I'm going to multiply the first equation by 2. So, I'll write that as 2a times 2 is 4a. 3 times 2 is 6, and plus c is plus 2c equals to 0. So what we did here at this stage was, we, this is our equation number 2 as such, and in this case, we had equation number 1 times 2. Right? So, so we multiplied the equation number 1 by 2 to eliminate c, right? Since we need to find the value of a, b, and c. Now let's add these two equations, right? So uh, let's, when you add them, you get 8a plus 11b equals to 0. We need to solve this equation now. So we can use parameters to solve. So it can have infinite solutions, you can see, right? So it has infinite solutions. It makes sense. You know, when you have these two vectors, let's say we have a vector u on this plane, and we have another vector v, right? In that case, all the vectors which are perpendicular to the paper, right, 
will be perpendicular to them, right? Do you see that? So, so we say we have infinite vectors perpendicular to two vectors. Right? Since on this plane, every vector like this will be perpendicular and all are solutions. So we have a parametric solution here, right? So, so we call this as a parametric solution. We can substitute some values of A and B, right? So, so what we can do is one solution could be we can take A as 11 and then B as minus 8. So then this equation is satisfied, right? Let's call this as our equation number 3 and equation 3 will be satisfied. If you substitute 11 for a and minus b as 8 minus 8 as b, you get 0, right? So we get these values. Now from here, we can sub these values in equation 1 to find c, right? So sub in equation 1 to find c. So when I do, so this is equation one, right? So we are now actually substituting these values back in our equation one to find C, clear? So we get two times A is 11 plus three times minus eight plus C equals to zero. So that is 22 minus 24 plus C equals to zero. And this is minus two plus C equals to zero. And that means C is equals to two. So if we get the value of C as 2, then clearly we know what W is. So we can say that the vector W is basically equal to A is 11, right? B is minus 8 and C is 2. Is that clear to you? So we do get our vector. Now it is a good idea to check the result, right? So, you know, do we have the right result? So let's check and test. It is important for you to understand that, you know, we got one answer. There could be many. Let us at least test, right? So, so if I do dot product of W with, let us say, U, which is 2, 3, 1, what do I get? 11, 22 minus 8 times 3 24 plus 2 it is equal to 0 so that means that means that the vector this is vector w right dot vector u equals to 0 so that means they are perpendicular you can do the same test with v also right so we have 4 5 minus 2 dot 11 minus 8 and 2 so that gives you what? 44 minus 40 and that is minus 4 and this is also equal to 0. So that also confirms that uh, the, the product V dot W is equal to 0. Do you see that part, right? So it is kind of important for us to understand that there could be many solutions and we need to estimate one value, figure out the other one, and then substitute those to get the third one. So like this, we can get many, many solutions for perpendicular vectors to two vectors, right? Now let's take uh, the related question, question number 10. Now in question number 10, this is very similar to what we did in question nine. It is find a unit vector, so the difference is to find a unit vector that is orthogonal to these two vectors. I'd like you to now pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. That will give you confidence of understanding the concepts learned. Perfect. So you can now pause the video, solve and then look into my solutions. So I hope that you have understood the process. Let us repeat the process learned in question number 9 to get the concept once again. 
So we are given two vectors u and v. Vector u, we can write this as 3 minus 4, 1, right? Vector v is given to us as 2, 3 minus 4. And we say w is a, b, c. Now, if w is perpendicular to u, then their dot product should be 0. So, again, we'll do a, b, c dot 3 minus 4, 1 equal to 0. And we get 3a plus rather minus 4b plus c equals to 0. And that is our equation number 1. Second equation, we are going to get by writing dot product of V with W. And that gives you ABC dot 2, 3, minus 4 equals to 0. And the equation will now be 2A plus 3B minus 4C equals to 0. So we have now two equations. However, there are three variables to calculate. So we expect infinite solutions. To solve these two equations, we need to eliminate, right? So we will do equation 1 times 4. We can write this as 12a minus 16b plus 4c equals to 0. And then equation 2 is 2a plus 3b minus 4c equals to 0. This is our equation number 2, right? To eliminate c, we are going to add them up. Is that clear to you? So we get 14a, and that is uh, minus 13b equals to 0. Easy solution could be, a, we can take as 13, right? And B as 14. So if you substitute, we will get 0. So if that is our solution, we'll call this as our solution, as equation 4. We'll substitute this in 1, right? So sub in 1. So 13, 3 times. Minus 4 times 14. Plus C equals to 0. Let's calculate these values. So, so 3 times 13, which is 39. And from this, we'll take away 4 times 14. So that gives us minus 17, right? So we get minus 17 plus C equals to 0, or C equals to 17. So we have the values for A, B, and C. Do you see that? And therefore, we can write down our vector, which is perpendicular to both, as 13, 14, and 17. Correct? Now, that is the vector, not the unit vector. We need to now find the unit vector. How do we do so? Unit vector has a magnitude of 1, right? So the unit vector w will be the vector itself, I mean, the vector itself over its magnitude. Then we get unit vector. So in our case, the unit vector, which we write as w cap, is the vector, which is 13, 14, 17, divided by square root of, 13 square plus 14 square plus 17 square. So let's calculate this value. So the square root of 13 square plus 14 square plus 17 square. This is square root of 654. So we have this as 1 over square root of 654 times 13, 14, 17. Is that clear to you? So that becomes our solution in this particular case. Right? So we can actually rewrite this unit vector as 
13 over square root of 654. 14 over square root of 654 and 17 over square root of 654. Does make sense to you? So that becomes our solution for the given question. So I hope that makes sense. So with this, we have done a great application of dot product to find the value of a orthogonal vector to two given vectors in R3. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.